Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, dear students of class 9th, we will start theorems today and the first theorem we will learn it all about. If in a given correspondence of the two triangles, one side and any two angles of the one first triangle are correspondingly congruent to the one side, corresponding sides and the other two angles of the other, the triangle must be congruent. What does it mean? These are two triangles and this is one side, the corresponding side is here. This is the first angle and the corresponding angle is here. And this is the second angle and the corresponding angle are there. And all of these three are congruent. Therefore, the triangle must be congruent. How can we prove that? We cannot prove that without learning a postulate called SAS postulate. What does the SAS postulate means? It means that if the two triangles are given and if any two sides of the first triangle are congruent to this, corresponding two sides, this side is congruent to this, this side is congruent to this, and the included angle, included angle, the angle in between the two sides, which is this, are congruent, then the triangle must be congruent. And we will take the help of this SAS postulate to prove this theorem. This is not SAS. We will take help. I must teach you there are two other possibilities. Not only these two sides. Even these two sides. Let's say this congruent to this and the included angle is congruent. Or the other two sides and the included angle. So these are the three possible uh, means of the SAS postulate. What does correspondence mean? You must bear in mind because you are going to start the theorems. If I name this triangle ABC, then if I gave, I want to give the corresponding name of the other, I must give it DEF, not EFT. Although a triangle ke che naam hote at least six names, ABC, BCA, and CAB and the reverse of the these three. So this is an SS postulate. If the two side and an included angle of the first triangle are congruent to the corresponding two sides and the included angle of the other, the triangle must be congruent. How can we take the help of this on this? What is given in that? This triangle, this side this is congruent to this, this angle is congruent to this. And this angle is coming to this. This is given. What we have to prove? These two triangles must be congruent. And how can we do that? I have already told you. We will use this. The construction of this theorem is so important. What the construction says? Construction says AB is not congruent to DE. Why? He is saying that. Look at this. Suppose AB is not congruent to B. You must ask your teacher why he is saying like this. And that's the most important to learn that. So he says AB is not congruent to B. Why he is saying that? He says because if AB is congruent to D, then this side is congruent to this. This side is congruent to this, and this side is congruent to this, and then SAS will come into play, and the triangle will be congruent. So here, AB is not congruent to D. You must think by yourself. Is it true? <coughs> the answer is fair. Not true. Because if this is the, and this side are not congruent, the triangle will not be congruent because for congruent triangles, all the sides must be congruent. So what does it mean? I will tell you later on. This side and this side is not congruent. And he takes a point, he takes a point, he can take this point outside. But we have to take one of the possibilities and we will going to follow the book. Take the point M. Side that, AB is congruent to ME. And then he joins this M 
to this one f join m to f this portion of the theorem which is called the construction is so important for you why ab is not congruent to de <coughs> and now ab is congruent to me and now you will see that i ever i will draw this triangle separately here to make you understand m e f and now if i take this triangle as this side of the triangle as this and this angle this is e this angle as this and this side as this you will see that what is happening out there and now this side was congruent to this look at this same side ef and ef this angle was congruent to this and this side is congruent to this and now i will take triangle abc and triangle mef abc and mef these two sides are now congruent why they are congruent according to the construction these two sides were already con congruent and these two angles were already congruent so what you see you will see that these two sides these two sides and these two angles are congruent therefore sas postulate will come into play ab is congruent to me b angle was congruent to e and now bc was congruent to ef this what we have done on in the construction and this was given and this was given therefore the triangle abc and the triangle m e f will be the congruent why they are congruent because of sas postulate s a s s a s and when these any two triangles are congruent this is the principle of the geometry that any two any postulate when the two triangles comes congruent to each other the remaining sides and the remaining angles also become congruent it is our choice and now i choose c angle i choose c angle so this angle will be congruent to this angle this and i will not call it f i will call it mef why i will call it mef is so important why because in given this c angle was congruent to f and not f i will just amend it now angle f c angle was congruent to this c angle was sorry this f angle was before construction it was b f before construction this angle f was a dfe so in given f was not only f it was dfe i haven't written down dfe before because it was awkward to write down it before then after the construction it is better and now c and dfe what congruent and now c and mef abc mef triangles are congruent and now let me check c angle is congruent to mfe not mef mfe sorry for the this angle mfe and this c angle was before the construction dfe if i ask you can this angle be congruent to this and can this angle be congruent to this you will say nonsense idea this angle is a smaller and this angle is larger so these two angles cannot be equal to an angle c and according to my mathematics abc is congruent to mfe and ab C angle, sorry, C angle was congruent to MFE and C angle is congruent to DFE, which is impossible. An angle C cannot be congruent to two different angles. That's a very fair idea. Okay, this angle 
can never be equal to this and this angle can never be equal to this. So how can we adjust that? You will say, okay, there are two possibilities. Bring this point M to the D or bring this point D to the M and then the solution will be very fair. So if I say to you, what is your option? To move D to M or to move M to D? You will say, since D was existing first, so M should go to the D. The idea is the same. So M and D represents the same point. This is possible only when D and M represent the same point. Otherwise, everything will be gone. And when D and M represents the same point, then I have already said in the construction that AB is congruent to ME. And now this M is not M. It is the same as D. So I will say that AB, which was congruent to ME, according to my construction, is now equal to DE. So AB is congruent to DE. And now, if I rub it all, if I rub it all, what you will see? What you will see? AB is congruent to DE. BC is congruent to EF. And B angle is congruent to E. What do you see in this? SAS postulate. This is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. So these two triangles, and now this triangle is gone. These two triangles are congruent. So I have written down from two, three, and four. You will learn from the books. What is this? Two is this. I am not mentioning the point. This is one of the point. This is the other point. I am not mentioning. You must check it out by yourself. And this is the third point. So these two triangles are congruent according to using the SAS postulate. So this was the first theorem all about. I hope you will learn it and you will ask a lot of questions if you didn't get it. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.